Hello, this is Eliza from Music Makers Academy, and I'm here with another webinar. Um, give me a sec, I will share my screen. It must be this one. And we are going to go here. Um, <laughs> View slideshow. There we go. All right. Um, so today's webinar is all about performance anxiety and how we can manage and overcome the anxiety we get when we know we have to perform in front of other people. This is um, an issue that basically every student will have to face at some point. And which is why I basically wanted to um, talk about it. So today's presentation is going to be pretty short. Um, I'm going to talk about performance anxiety and what are some of the symptoms that we tend to experience when we get nervous. I'm also going to explain why it is that we get anxious when we have to perform and then finally i'm gonna um, talk through uh, preparation strategies mindset strategies and practical strategies that students can use to um, manage their anxiety and i use the word manage intentionally because it's unrealistic to think that there will be a time in life when we'll never get nervous performing. Um, if you speak to professional musicians, um, even those who have a lot of performing experience, they will tell you that they still get nervous. Um, but the difference is that professional musicians, um, first of all, they they sort of accept that they're going to get nervous and they know how to deal with it and that makes them confident performers so first of all let's talk about performance anxiety and what actually happens in our body when we get nervous i'm not going to go into all the chemistry of it because i actually don't know um, but what I do want to um, share is that often when people get nervous, um, hearts start racing. And because our heart starts racing, then it's harder to breathe. And so instead of a nice, slow, comfortable, deep breathing, we start having very short and shallow breathing and shorter breaths as well. Um, hands, <laughs> depending on the person, hands might go like very cold and stiff, or they might get like really, really sweaty. Um, I know that when I get very nervous, my hands go like clammy, like they're cold, but they sweat at the same time. It's very odd. Um, body uh, trembling. Um, or shaking, so hands might start shaking when we get nervous, or legs, feet, whatever it is, there's going to be a body part that starts shaking. Um, and that could be like shivering of being, being really cold, but also just the fear um, can make someone shake. Um, we can also experience memory slips, and we just can't focus as well because of all these physical things happening to us. And the sad thing is that often when we feel nervous, there's the danger that things just like spiral out of control. And I've made this little um, diagram here so that you can see so, you know, we, we might start here, like with the physical symptoms of anxiety that I've just described. We get 
cold, um, our hands start to shake, um, we can't focus, uh, we can't really breathe very well. And so then when we actually get to like play the piece, then what are some usual things that happen? Well, we might make mistakes that we've never made before. And that's really off-putting. We might suddenly use the wrong fingering. Our muscles are not working the way that's supposed to. We might forget how the music goes. And we might even like look at the music and not know where we are. Um, and of course, we might have trouble focusing because um, we're too overwhelmed with having to like calm ourselves down. And so because like our performance is going so badly, well, then we like start to have all these negative thoughts about it. We might tell ourselves, this is going so badly, or I don't know what's happening. Um, I'm so bad at this. And because we're having these negative thoughts, well, then that makes our physical symptoms get worse, which means our performance gets worse, which means the negative thoughts keep happening, etc., etc. So you can see that, yeah, it's it's a slippery slope downhill um, when we have performance anxiety and when we don't have any tools to deal with it. It can just easily control us, manipulate us. Um, and so it's very important that as growing musicians, you know, we learn techniques to control this anxiety. So before I talk about what are some of the strategies and techniques we can use, I just really want to briefly talk about the reason why we get nervous. Um, and I believe that at the, at the core, we get nervous because we actually really deeply care about what people think of us. And we really want to have people's approval of us. We want people to think that we are good enough. If we didn't actually care what people thought, then we wouldn't get so nervous. Um, we might also get nervous because we don't want to disappoint others. Okay, we don't want to disappoint our teacher who has invested so much of their time, so much of their expertise with us. We don't want to disappoint our parents who are also investing in us, who are expecting us to be good because of their investment. And this might even be like subconscious, but we don't want to disappoint ourselves. We feel that we're working hard, so we can't, we can't get it wrong. Um, otherwise, otherwise it's our responsibility that we're bad and we have to own that to ourselves. And that's sometimes it's really hard to realize that we suck. <laughs> um, we, we are scared of having this horrible experience in front of other people because it's embarrassing and it can be humiliating and i think in in the music world um, we feel pressure to perform perfectly depending on how you define what a perfect performance is but for a lot of students it's like playing a piece without playing wrong notes so no no wrong notes um, which we can argue is, isn't actually what makes a perf perfect performance, but that's beside the point for this particular presentation. Um, 
So all of these things added together create the atmosphere or the environment for nerves to show up. Um, and we might get even more nervous if we like are very shy, um, if we don't like being the center of attention um, for those types of children or people like performing can be like very, very scary. And of course, if we are not like well prepared for the performance, then we're definitely going to feel a lot more nervous as well. So, you know, it's, I think it's important to understand and acknowledge, like, why is it that we get nervous? It's, it's because we don't want to let people down. We don't want to let ourselves down. And it's because we just want to be accepted and approved by others. And so when we perform, um, that, that's what we're trying to, um, to achieve in a way. It's, um, it's approval. Um, and it's, uh, we want to feel that we deserve to be where we are. Um, so now that I've explained all of that, let me share with you some good news. There are a number of strategies that students can learn to manage their own performance anxiety. And I will share in a moment what those are. And the other good news is that the more we perform, the better we get at it. Okay, the better we get at managing the anxiety, because we get to know it better. We get to know how it feels in our body. Um, and we get better at knowing yeah, how to calm ourselves down. We also get better at putting our performance like in the larger picture. So because often what happens is we get so narrow minded and focused on the performance. We think it's the end of the world if something bad happens. But like nobody has died of performing badly you know um life goes on after a performance there's, there's other things in life than just performing but often we just forget about the larger picture um but you know the more you perform the more you realize that oh this is just another performance it's not a huge deal or it's not as big of a deal as I'm making it out to be. And also, the more we perform, the more comfortable we get with our anxiety, and the more comfortable we get at feeling uncomfortable. And it's like, ah, oh, these are my nerves. It's nice, nice to feel you again. <laughs> it means that I care about what I do. So now I'm going to share with you some strategies, techniques and tools that, you know, I've read about, I've come across that I personally use um, when I have to perform. And I've broken these down into three categories. The first is our performance preparation. So how can you prepare yourself before a performance so that you can attend your performance feeling like you might know what to do. Um, the second category is like sort of practical strategies you can use in the moment as you're like walking up to the stage or as you're sitting at your instrument. And the third category is mindset. So what are some of the thoughts we can think to help us calm down and to help us control how anxious we feel? So in terms of performance preparation strategies, obviously you sort of want to start having mock performances before the actual performance. And so ways you can do that 
is by playing for family members and friends. Just have a mini concert at your house and play in front of somebody else. And chances are those physical symptoms of nerves are going to creep up on you but you get to feel them in this safe environment before the big day of your performance. So that's a great learning opportunity. If you don't want to play for friends or for family, then put a camera, film yourself. It's very strange, but when there's a camera staring at you right there as you play, we get really nervous. And we like instantly feel that pressure to like not play any wrong notes. Um, and that gets us a bit nervous. So that's another great way of just feeling that pressure and of seeing if you are still able to go to play through your piece when you feel that pressure and those nerves. You have to also practice playing the piece from start to finish without stopping because that's how you have to play it in a performance. You know, when we're performing, we can't just, you know, go back to the beginning if we make a wrong note. We can't just stop there and, and try again. The idea is that when we perform, we just keep going until we get to the end. So practice doing that. Practice going through mistakes, practice ignoring mistakes, practice accepting wrong notes. Um, and that's another great technique to do. When, when there's a performance, often you'll be in a different room, you might even be playing on a different instrument, the lighting will be different, the acoustics will be different, there's just so many factors that you just cannot anticipate or prepare for. But what you can prepare for is being able to play in different environments. And a very easy way of doing that is by playing in different rooms around your house. Because then you get used to different lighting, different acoustics, da 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 da. Um, because often when you practice, it's always in like that same place. It might even always be the same time of day. So something else you can do is to play at different times in the day. Your energy might be worse at night time or it might be worse in the morning. So how does the time of day impact your focus and your ability to perform well? So just try playing at different times in the day. Something else that's really, really useful is to be able to play a piece from any bar or any section in your music. A lot of people, they will just practice from the very beginning all the time. <laughs> but in a performance, we might make a mistake halfway through and well, we just have to be able to keep going. So you have to be able to start from anywhere in the music in case that during the performance you make a mistake anywhere you can just you can just keep going because you've practiced starting the piece from anywhere and finally another really good um, preparation tip is to actually prepare and practice the performing uh, process so walk to your instrument just as you would walk to the instrument during the performance, play through the piece from start to finish, practice standing up, collecting your music and taking a bow. And just doing all of those, uh, th those three things, you know, walking up to the instrument, playing and standing up and bowing, um, that will just give you a bit of a process um, for when the actual performance happens because you'll feel like you, you know exactly what to do. Okay, next. In terms of um, dealing with the physical symptoms that come up 
when we get nervous and anxious. That's probably one of the hardest things to do is to, um, it, it can feel like we don't control our body. <laughs> and that's a very powerless place to be. But if you know that when you get nervous, your hands go cold, you know, bring, bring gloves, bring hand warmers to keep your hands nice and warm. But if you're like the opposite and your hands get hot and sweaty, just bring a towel that you can wipe them or, or tissues or something like that. Um, if you have, if during the, like, or before the performance, there's a, like a private, a private area, maybe like backstage, um, just do some move, some physical movements to release that um, energy or to get it flowing through you. So, you know, like big arm circles, you can do vocal sounds, um, just try imagine the energy in your body and how can you, how can you let it out through movement? Obviously, probably the most important one is just taking deep breaths, belly breaths. Um, you can even do breathing with counting. So uh, inhaling for four, exhaling for four. So we just put all our focus on the breath. And by breathing deeply, um, you know, the, the shaking might stop. The heart racing might slow down. Um, so that's a great one to do. Before starting your piece, you might just find a point to focus on and just focus on that point for, I don't know, 30 seconds, something like that. So that before we start, you know, our mind is nice and still. So it might just be you know, if you play piano, just focus on on a key for 30 seconds, just to still the mind. Um, and something else that I have found very useful is to sort of have my own little ritual or routine. Um, from the moment I am called up to the stage to the moment I start playing, there's actually a number of things that I always go through. And that makes me feel like, okay, I'm ready to play now. So I sit on my instrument. I, I always know how high my chair has to be. And if I need to, I change it. I'm also extremely picky with like where my music stand is placed if I'm performing on the harp. So I always like double check that this, the legs of my music stand are like at the angle that I like, um, the, the height that I like. Uh, I check that I can seal my music. I check my page corners. Um, then I, I take a breath. I start thinking about the music. I try to hear the first couple of bars in my mind. And once all of that is done, then I position myself to start, take another breath, count myself in, and then I start. So there's all of these tiny, tiny steps that happen before I actually start playing. And so encouraging students to develop their own routine of steps between the moment they sit at the instrument and the moment they start can be very empowering because it gives them a checklist. Yes, I've done that. I've done that. I've done that. I've done that. I'm ready to play. But if you think about it, you know, uh, performance anxiety, it's really a battle of the mind. Um, and of being able to control your thoughts so that you can control the anxiety. And, and so for me, what I have found helpful is when I'm feeling nervous, I remind myself that my duty as a musician is to make the most beautiful music that I can. 
And instead of focusing on the anxiety that I'm feeling, instead of focusing on how nervous I am, how much my hands are shaking, I switch my focus on the music. How can I make this sound more beautiful? How can I get a better sound out of my playing? Um, how can I share this music to the best of my ability? And so I just focus my attention on the actual sound that I'm producing, on the meaning of the music, on the message that I want to communicate in the music. Um, and I really open my ears to the music that I'm creating. And that really helps me deal with my own anxiety. Another important uh, or useful tool is um, reframing. So instead of thinking, I feel so nervous, um, this is horrible, just tell yourself, actually, I'm excited. This is excitement. It's an exciting energy. And yeah, I'm just very excited to be able to play. And then it becomes uh, fun, it becomes a positive experience. And then um, another mindset shift is to put the performance again into perspective. Um, you know, really, it's actually not a big deal if you play a wrong note. Nobody really cares. Maybe some people are not even going to notice that you play a wrong note. So it's not a big deal. If something bad happens, you'll survive. Um, and you're going to do amazing. You know, it's not the end of the world if something goes wrong. Um, and so something that I tell myself sometimes is, is just the affirmation. I release all expectations I have of my performance. When you're performing, there is such a big element of unpredictability. We, as I mentioned, we might be playing in an environment we've never played in before. The music, the instrument might sound completely different to what we're used to because of the change in environment. And in a way, it's sort of unrealistic to expect ourselves to play in the way we usually play at home when we're practicing in the same room that we've been practicing for many years, right? So we have to just accept that a performance is always going to be unpredictable. And that's, that's what makes it exciting. And that's what makes it challenging. Um, and all we can do as, as a performing musician is just to do our best and, um, and to just focus on the music so that we don't get hung up on our mistakes. Okay, so releasing expectations. You know, maybe you can ask yourself, how, how do I feel if I make a wrong note? And if you can feel like, yeah, it's actually not a big deal, then you're in a good place mentally. So that basically wraps it up. Um, I hope that you found this little presentation useful. Um, if you're a parent with a, a child who, you know, has pretty severe anxiety, maybe just get them to listen to this or, or recommend um, some of the um, techniques that I have mentioned and see if it helps. All right, bye-bye.